Yeah, well, first pitch ambush there by Kike Hernandez. Uh, not the guy that you expect uh, is going to be the one who beats you with power, but but the has, guy you hate has had a history of doing it in October. <laughs> you know, a monster in October, just an absolute monster. A guy who wasn't even in the Dodgers starting lineup until Miguel Rojas got hurt. I yeah. mean, not not one that Dave Ro- Roberts was playing until he had to. Yeah, and then when he had to, he put him in and. Ends up, you know, saving the series essentially for the Dodgers um, with with the second inning home run that put the Padres behind. And again, that that third inning, I thought I I had the feeling when I was in the stands that that this was the moment for the Padres. Yes. Get the two one out singles by Higashioka and Arise got him on the ropes. Felt like okay, they have left Yamamoto in there too long. What was the talk before the game? No way Yamamoto goes more than no. one one trip through the lineup. No, no chance, and, man. But, but he, was, he was he was good enough that it's like okay, they're leaving him in there. They're letting him face Tatis for a second time. This R- is this is the moment where it goes south on the Dodgers. Remember, man, we did the roundtable before, and Craig was vehemently, you know, like as convicted as I've ever seen him, and he's a pretty convicted guy. Craig was like, there's no way they're going to start Yamamoto. None. I said, too, I'm like, I'd be surprised if they didn't do an opener, you know, do something, and then maybe use Yamamoto. And that dude went out like a starter. You know, a guy they paid $325 million for, he went out like a starter, and said, I'm taking the ball, and I'm going to throw strikes, and I'm going to make these guys expand the zone, and he did. And he was good. He was really good. The slider that he was throwing that looked like a heater until the very last second, the one that he got Fernando to roll over on, just nasty. Going up in the zone to Merrill. Roll over, he hit it hard, just the wrong spot. Still, still. I mean, it's a a pitch on the outer third, and he ends up pulling it to third base. So he came around it. It's a tough it looked fast. It looked like a fastball. Looked, I mean, and I'm sure Tatis was looking fastball. It was three one. Wow. You don't want to load the bases, uh, you know. And it was a really good pitch. And he I pitched I, really well. I didn't hear any comments from Yamamoto after the game. I was in the Padres clubhouse. Maybe you did. To me, it felt like they told him, "Go out like you're a reliever." 100. You know what? And if you give us one inning and it's good, great. And then it was one inning. It was good. It go. You got another one. Yep. Went out and did it again. And like, all right, you got another one. And they just said. Don't leave anything – don't don't act like you're trying to pitch seven or eight innings today. You are simply going out there max velocity like you're a reliever for as long as you can. Well, and, and, ditch, and it worked really well for him. Ditch your crappy splitter and just throw fastball slider to these guys. Go up in the zone. I have a um, one of the dads on Bo's team is a Dodger fan, and he's a really, really smart one and knows a lot of scouts and things like that. And we were talking about it yesterday, and he goes, a couple things. He said, "Number one, I've never seen some. I've never seen a team pitch up in the zone better than the Dodgers did the last few games." And I went, "You're absolutely right." And I said, "I've never seen our guys expand for that many games in a row. Two all season. The elite adjusters that we are and were, we did not do. We did not adjust up in the zone, and they just couldn't get to anything." And he, he also said, "There's a couple of moments." He said. Listening to the Padres players' comments after the bullpen game, he goes, it's the only time in the whole series that I felt even a little bit confident. A little bit. Listening to Jackson Merrill, who's like, we had no idea what was going on. Listening to all of them going, yeah, that bull, those bullpen guys were tough. <laughs> he goes, I really felt like we had you beat there in the, in, the, in the mental game. Obviously, we know what happened with the Dave Roberts thing. Now, The swing that changed it all for for me, the whole series was, so the timeline of events, we had the big show on Tuesday, we talked about Dave Roberts' awful comments that that led to the, the Rosenthal hit piece on Machado, right? Well, what did the Padres do? They came out, they put up six runs, Michael King on the bump. When Michael King gave up a couple of bleeders and the grand slam to let them back in that game 6-5, you, you could feel it. You could feel the Dodgers go, oh, my God, we have a chance. Now, they did not get it done in that game. The Padres' bullpen came in, shut them down. See, I thought that would be the big air out of their balloon. They took their shot. And lost. They had a chance, and they lost. And usually that is not when feel you can that really step on a team. We nope. didn't really even talk about much on, what was that, Wednesday morning? Like, we were just happy with the win. Happy with the win. We weren't really focusing on the fact that the Padres were held scoreless innings three through nine. Correct. Because the Padres also, their bullpen shut the Dodgers down Correct. after that grand Correct. slam. And, and, and we didn't know that the Padres, that was the last time they were going to score in 
2024. It was nuts. I mean, I was there. It was the best game to go to, to because of the result. But when, when he hit that Grand Slam, it went, oh, yeah, look what we can do. We can go single, single, single Grand Slam on any pitcher, even a pitcher that is pitching lights out in the postseason. Teoscar Hernandez, future Padres left fielder. Could have potentially. He's going to be a free agent. He's going to make a lot of money. Uh, but I, I, look, I looked at that and I went, okay, yeah, you got to come out and answer. And, and obviously, you're going to sit and you're going to lament the fact that, I guess, I guess you're going to lament the fact that we didn't throw Martin Perez the next day. But again, the offense did nothing. And that, like I said on the round table, the offense doing nothing bailed Schilt out and it bailed Dylan Cease out. Okay, it wouldn't have mattered how many runs Dylan Cease gave up or Martin Perez, you know, didn't give up because you didn't score. And it really bailed them out of that decision. And I'm, I'm still fine with the decision. Dylan Cease has to do a better job. He's got to do a better job. And, and if we're pointing fingers right now, so does every superstar on this team. They all, except for Fernando, who, by the way, finished like 0 for 12, his last 12 or something, or 0 for 11. Um, they all need to do a better job, period. And it goes, it goes, starts with their eyes. You can't be a table setter and not bring any food to the table. You know, I mean, that's, you just can't. You got one hit in the last four games or something. It just can't happen. The whole team, it was, it's, it's, it's up and down. It's Manny. There's it's, no point it's in singling out no, one or two guys no. because if, every single player on the roster rolled over in games four and five, except for you, Darvish. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, you know, our, even our beloved Jackson Merrill, seeing Jackson Merrill chase pitches at his eyes was shocking to me. But I understand it. I understand why you do it, because you're trying to do anything to help your team win. Now, remember Kurt Schilling uh, years ago with the ketchup sock, and everyone was screaming at the Yankees that day. What were they telling them to do? You got to lay a bump down at that guy. If he really is, if his ankle is held together by staples and there's blood coming through, bun him to death. Get him out of the game. You had Freddie Freeman on one leg playing first. Not one person tried to drag Jerickson one. Jerickson tried, tried, tried once and was just a little bit foul. And that yeah. was the only the only time. It's crazy. And I I feel Mister Mister hates bunting. I think um, Jerickson in particular. I was. I was expecting at some point that he was going to come through with a big swing. He was going to yank a home run to right at some point in that series in the postseason after the year that he had. And Jerickson off his offense just never never showed up. Yeah, in the in, three in the hole, you had, you had yeah, one RBI, man. That's... One one RBI from the three hole spot. Doesn't mean I love you any less. He scored one run. Um, you know, Manny Manny had had the one home run. He drove in four. Uh, but, you know, really expanded the zone in the last game after, you know, again, hitting two balls. I thought were on the screws that didn't go out. Um, man, I, I, you know, Tatis had such a great start. Uh, nobody finished well. Nobody. There's not one person that finished well that they can hang their hat on the last two games and say, well, at least I did my job. Crony was not good. Profar was not good. Arise was not good. Xander was not good. Manny was not good. Merrill was not good. You know, and Tatis was not good the last couple of games. And what when it all goes south like that, it's going to be tough to win, no matter no matter what your pitching does. I saw the um, you know the doom and despair on social media, especially after the Dodgers were up two nothing. And it's weird. I had I still had some faith and confidence that the top of the eighth inning was going to be the inning. Uh, you know, Vesey was coming back out. Yeah, he had gotten just one out. I texted you guys and I, I said. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to bring Vesia back out. Xander's going to open with a single to get on. And then they can't change out the pitcher uh, after that. And it's going to – so they're going to end up getting two on, and then Jake's going to come out. And then Dave's going to have this tough decision. He's got his lefty-lefty matchup, but Jake, who has come through against Vesia in the playoffs, they're going to leave him in. Jake's going to come through big time. But then Vesia ends up getting hurt in warm-ups – take him out i was like this is weird at the time now yeah i thought maybe a little fishy the, the but... fact that vessi is out for the uh the nlcs i guess he really did hurt himself and xander did i mean yeah that one i thought was for sure a single when when he connected it hit a line drive but unfortunately right at second base what it looks right there and that was really the last hard hit ball for the padres last chance to get a lead runner on get some rally going there in the eighth inning it just never Never happened for the Padres on Friday night. Even in the even in the eight nothing loss, they had what seven seven hits or something in that game. Yep, seven hits. They had nine chances with runners in scoring position. They nine. didn't come through. They had one chance. 
0 for 1 with a double play grounder with runners in scoring position. They didn't do anything. Well, on and again, and if you had told the Padres fan base, you're going to hold Shohei to almost nothing. Almost nothing. One home run, a 200 average, and like seven or eight Ks. You think to yourself, we're winning this series, yeah. no problem. Padres, uh, you, you sign up for that instantly. You sign up for two solo home runs from you, Darvish, and six and two-thirds innings instantly. It's like, are we sure we, we'll take that two runs? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I would have no qualms about either of those you know, stat lines. I would have taken those at the start of the series, at the start of that game, because I thought the Padres offense would put up at least five or six runs pretty much every single game, which they did until the last two.